Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the latest episode of Paragastan. We are in the beautiful Swiss Alps in the village of Davos. Can't you tell? Don't, yeah, you don't you see tell, right. behind me. I was promised these LED screens <laughs> with this beautiful alpine scenery. You'll just have to take our word for it. I'll do some live shoots outside later. Um, but one of the fascinating things about being in the Facebook studio pavilion, it's gorgeous, by the way, uh, reminds you just of the Facebook office itself, exactly. nicely recreated. Um, one of the interesting things, lots of people are coming in here, and they're talking about lots of different issues, interviewing many of the foreign dignitaries and personalities that are coming. But one of the things that doesn't get talked about here in the Facebook pavilion is Facebook itself. So we're very lucky to be joined by Elliot Trigg, uh, and uh, you lead all global communications and strategy around communications mm -hmm. for Facebook. Uh, you're really one of the, the pillars of thinking about the, 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 the um, strategic, kind of strategic positioning of the company, mm -hmm. and you know I had some very good conversations mm -hmm. uh, over the years about how Facebook is evolving, and there's been a very recent evolution, of course, and I wanted to start with that because we should explain to people all around the world in, in layman's terms, really, what's changed with the news feed, and sure. focusing more on the personal and the community side of it and uh, as that sort of influences people's content. What are some early indications around mm -hmm. the results of this shift? Sure. Well, first, it's, it's really nice to, to, to be here I, and, and to have the opportunity to talk to your, mm -hmm. uh, your groupies and fans. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry that we don't have the glorious view, but I do want to say the fact that we have this studio is really a reflection of our, of our mission. Right. Uh, our company, our mission is all about creating community. Yeah. Uh, it's all about giving people a voice. Yeah. And Davos is really a much smaller, indeed elite enclave. And this is our effort to open up a place right. like Davos yeah. to people who are not here so that they can appreciate the uh, ideas that are being discussed, yeah. the people who are here. And it's really, honestly, an honor to be uh, able to chat with you. And, and obviously, I'm delighted to talk about Facebook. So let's, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, a bunch of the announcements. Right. We made two big announcements over right. the past couple of weeks. Uh, and, and what I'd like to do is maybe take a step back. The announcements are both uh, about changes we've made to Newsfeed. Right. And I want to make I want to even c correct some misimpressions that people have about Newsfeed. Um, everybody in our community, now uh, around 2 billion people, gets their own personal Newsfeed. Right. And the experience that they get on Newsfeed is not a result of what Facebook decides. Right. It's, as a re it's a result of the communities they build. Right. So that the stuff that they see comes from the connections they make with their friends, mm -hmm. the connections they make with organizations, with pages, with authors, uh, uh, with media companies, uh, with advertisers, mm -hmm. uh, with the products they care about, et cetera. So the average person has, I think, somewhere now it's changed. It's somewhere around 150 uh, friend connections right, right. And, and something around that in terms of other kinds of connections. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the content that each person receives is a reflection of what's going on among the institutions and people they care right. about. Yeah. And, and um, th that's been the experience in Newsfeed since we launched it. Right. Uh, it's actually, it, was not, it was not part of the original Facebook. It was right. actually somewhat controversial right. uh, when we first launched it. Um, and what we've seen is that the original Newsfeed was all about friends and family. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so the content you saw was really the experiences your friends and family were having. Mm -hmm. And then over time, more and more other forms of content, right. uh, cat videos or news organizations or products or mm -hmm. services that you care about uh, would, would uh, pro uh, crop up and you would like those pages and get content from them. And what we, what we learned and what we saw over time was that there, more and more of the content on Facebook was moving from what we would call active engagement, right. or really now what we're calling meaningful social interactions, right. to passive consumption. And passive consumption, I'm sure you've done it, I do it, you, where you just sort of scroll through right. your news feed or click on a story or click on a video and mm -hmm. watch it and then move on, mm -hmm. or maybe click like or smiley face right. or something like that. And, and, and we've done some research, and the research shows that uh, while that may be good in moderation, the, the experience that people really enjoy are the more meaningful social and active, and active engagement. Yeah. And, and it's when they see something about a problem a friend is having or a wonderful development of friend's life, a marriage, a child, or graduation, right. and they really engage. Mm -hmm. Or even, frankly, an article or subject that they're right. passionate about. They're marching in the Women's March, right. and they, they have a point of view and people engage yeah. around that. And as we had more and more connections that were not friends and family, uh, the experience moved less, moved away from meaningful social interactions yeah. and more towards the passive, uh, the passive consumption. Yeah. And so the first announcement we made was that we're making a conscious decision right. uh, to move back to our roots. Yep. 
and that is we want to favor content that promotes meaningful social interactions. Right. And that's going to, you know, that's, that's going to have a real impact on those parts of Facebook that created content designed for passive yep. consumption, yep. video, brands, companies, uh, uh, publishers, et cetera. Uh, so that was the first uh, 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 announcement. And what we've seen is we, we've only slowly begun to run it out, roll it out. We've had some experiments. The experiments, not surprisingly, demonstrate that people do have more meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. If, we did, if we hadn't gotten the experimental results, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be doing it. Um, so that was the first uh, uh, change. And, and the, one of the interesting things is that may lead to a reduction in the amount of time people spend on Facebook. And that may have ramifications for advertising and other, right. you know, business. It's not 100% clear, but uh, Mark made clear in uh, in announcing this that because of our concern about time well spent and right. well-being, right. we thought that was an appropriate trade-off to yeah. make. Yeah. My prediction is what will happen is those other sources of content will start investing in creative and new ways right. to 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 uh, engage people right. with meaningful social interactions. Yeah. Yeah. And so we'll see how that plays yeah. out. So that was the first announcement. I'm sorry if I'm going on long, but no. this is your audience this is, is what a we informed want. Want audience. People understand this. Yeah. The second is about news yeah. because we have become an important part of, of the news ecosystem. Though I think sometimes people overstate our impact on news. Um, for the average person, um, only uh, about five percent of the stories they see come from news sources, right. news organizations, news publishers. Uh, and some of that is uh, controversial, some of that is not, um, but, we may, but, but a lot of that triggers passive consumption. Right. And so what we, we, we've decided to do, and Mark announced last Friday, was that we're actually going to change the shift, uh, uh, or the, 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 the amount of news on Facebook, from what it is today to a slightly smaller number. Right. Today, interestingly, only 5% of the stories, as I said, are from news sources, and that's going over time to go down to 4%. Right. Now, that sounds like a small change, but if you're a publisher, that's 20% reduction. Right. Uh, I say that for the innumerate people out there. <laughs> uh, and so uh, we wanted to make sure, though, that the news experience is optimized for quality news. And so at the same time that we're reducing the overall share of news, we are uh, making a change to the news feed to adjust the mix of news. Mm. And that is we're introducing the concept of trusted sources. Again, right. the goal is high quality news. Yep. And the elements of high quality news are tr that we've identified are trusted, uh, informative, mm. and local. And right. the first thing, first area where, you know, classic way we work, we innovate and iterate around, you know, each of these areas. So the first area we've, we are introducing is, is the idea of trusted sources. Right. And what we're doing is as part of our ongoing surveys examining uh, interviewing uh, users, uh, we always do statistical significant surveys every every day. Frankly, right. we're going to start asking them about the news sources yep. uh, in their yep. market Absolutely. and asking them to, to to identify whether they consider these sources trusted yep. or not. Yep. And we believe that because of the methodologies we'll use, we will identify sources that are trusted by broad swaths right. of the population, right. Right. and those sources will generally now get greater distribution yeah. than they would have otherwise. Yeah. And one hopes now this is going to contribute to better informed citizens. And one of the reasons I do not worry about people spending less time on Facebook mm -hmm. is when you're a platform company, all sorts of co-creation happens and exactly. people find new ways. Exactly. To it. And one of the new areas is politics, and not in this sort of passive and accidental way of, oh my goodness, there's lots of news that relates to an election and therefore Facebook is a vehicle for that discourse. Rather, right. much more, and this has been lost obviously in the last few months in the conversation, but Facebook has invested a lot and mm -hmm. thought a lot and worked a lot with public figures, with politicians, with government agencies to promote re voter registration drives, to use the social media metadata to help to understand what people's concerns are and to localize them. Facebook can be a very important tool of governance. There's and so a, that is, there's going to be more, more of that. More opportunity a good for that. thing. I want to hear maybe a story or two or just, you know, what, what are, where, where, where is that going? So we were talking about that before we, we came on. You know, we're not a political organization in the sense that our news feed advances partic particularly right. political objectives. There are, however, we are a values-based organization. Mm -hmm. We believe in democratic mm -hmm. values. We think participation is a good thing. Yeah. We think a civic discourse is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, we think accountability of, of uh, governing officials is a good thing. Right. And we build tools uh, to help uh, citizens engage 
on the political process more right. effectively. Right. Uh, and that, as you suggest, that ranges from steps we take to encourage people to register to vote mm -hmm. uh, to helping candidates engage with right. their constituents. We've yeah. done some very interesting work, as you say, with metadata so that when, people, when candidates or elected officials see the comments on their page or, right. uh, or to their posts, uh, they can identify which are, are the comments are coming from constitu constituents. Right. Well, that's an incredibly powerful uh, way for... Uh, um, for, for those who govern uh, to engage with those who are governed. Right. And if you want to talk about meaningful social interactions, I think that there will be real opportunity mm -hmm. as a result of these changes for elected officials who right. seriously invest right. in engaging to do that yeah. and really build stronger connections to their yeah. constituencies. So like I'm to see very, a lot more of that. I, I, I certainly hope so. You know, so Asia is one of the geographies where there has been a big uptake in the usage of Facebook, mm -hmm. both for the individual community level, and also now as a, let's say, a platform, mouthpiece, megaphone sure. for Asian politicians. Right now, as we sit here, Prime Minister Modi of India is giving right. his address right. to the, uh, in the plenary hall over there at the Congress Center. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a great example of this. Absolutely. So there, too, you know, we have to, there's the good and the bad. There's the, the spreading of rumors amongst ethnic minorities and so forth, and per per perhaps the same tools exactly. around trusted sources and so forth that can be used in Asia to control some of that. Mm -hmm. But importantly, in these nation democracies, in these modernizing societies where people are getting online mm -hmm. for the first time, um, they're going to experience this postmodern politics, right. which Facebook is all is just from the first time they experience elections and get you know get involved. Social media is part of that. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, it's the largest growing market of Facebook users. Indonesia and India exactly. now are uh, becoming as large as the U.S. and Brazil, right, right. in terms of the audience, and exactly. they're growing at a much much, much faster, uh, faster rate. rate. So, to me, and Asia, quite frankly, as someone who lives there as mm -hmm. an expat. Um, you know, they're very pragmatic. Mm -hmm. you, know, you do not have this sense that, oh, my God, you know, one bad episode or, right. you know, sort of um, misunderstanding about how newsfeed operates, you know, damages. Up the whole you, you know, so you, they don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And so to me, maybe Asia is really fertile mm -hmm. ground for Facebook to become an even more progressive tool of governance. And we've seen now, we've got these amazing stories, not the individual, the consumer level, the, at the entrepreneur level, exactly. of how Asians are using in Indonesia. There's women going door to, used to mm -hmm. go door to door in cosmetics. They got on Facebook. They became right. multimillionaires. You know, the role that Facebook has in spreading uh, the fiber optic cable networks around the littoral countries exactly. like, like the Philippines. So Asians are seizing Facebook in that pragmatic kind of way. So I want to get your thoughts I on the Asia exactly strategy. I think that's exactly I think, you know, I think the, the Asia experience, the, here's what I say almost categorically, the Asia experience using Facebook as a tool will be similar, but also very different yeah. from the way uh, more established uh, Western democracies use it. And, and it's, it's a result of a, of a different uh, communications environment. Uh, I think there isn't the same media tradition in a lot of these countries. Uh, there isn't the same opportunity for the mm -hmm. average citizen to engage. Um, and at the same time, I think they will be benef beneficiaries of some of the challenges, frankly, that we've had in other parts of the yeah. world. Um, we are, as a result of some of, the, as a result of the experiences that we've had in, with elections over the past year here in in, in the U.S. and in Europe, we're much more rigorously monitoring right. uh, activity on the platform. We're much more focused on the authenticity of people who are speaking, right. uh, on uh, investigating reports of right. uh, inappropriate or abusive content. Uh, and, I, and, and I think the societies themselves are going to build mechanisms to ensure more civic discourse. Um, so I'm, I'm, I am uh, quite optimistic that they will engage with this tool uh, or the tools that we offer in ways that will create a more informed right. citizenry, a more informed electorate, a more active uh, electorate. Uh, and and my, my, my hope certainly is a healthier democracy right. in, 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 yeah. in these countries. It will be different. And I have no doubt, I, let me be the first to predict, there will be complaints. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the people who lose will be unhappy uh, at the way things work. The people who win will feel that they didn't get as much opportunity to right, leverage right, the tools right. that we were constraining them. And that's, you know, that's part of being an active participant in society. Yeah. And I think our approach is going to be to be transparent about what we're doing, yeah. uh, engaged in response to inquiries, uh, and supportive where we can be of, of, yeah. of, of these democratic processes. Yeah. Uh, you've given us a lot of insight. And actually, as for everyone out there who's following Davos very closely, there's a lot of live stream sessions that are going to happen in a bunch 
bunch of them focus on exactly this topic. Right. Populism, technology, Absolutely. governance, where our society is going. So we want these ideas to right. filter in that conversation. Exactly. As you out there are listening in to the Davos sessions, that's what you should be paying attention for. Look for the detail, look for the stories, look for the positive policy changes that you're seeing, and Facebook's a part of that story. So, Elliot, thanks a lot. It's great it's to, to see you. Man. Thanks enjoy, so much for having me. Enjoy the mountains. Uh, exactly. Enjoy. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. What a beautiful <laughs> view. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.